All right, so I'm here at North American Honey Bee Expo Nobby 24. I'm with Jose Madrigal. I can't say it that that you well. Have to, if you say it three times real fast, you'll end up in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, Madrigal is fine. Ma Madrigal. Ma there you go. There is you that go. is that offensive? Not <laughs> not offended at all. I, you know, grow, growing up in Central Illinois with a name like that, I I got used to all kinds of butchering. So yeah, uh, I'm not at all offended with it. And I've got you here because you, this is super cool. Your booth is super super cool. Thank you. Uh, my wife got me a present, uh -huh. and it was some of your artwork yeah yeah be, yeah. be photographs uh -huh. and then i saw you here and i was like oh yeah so mm -hmm. i wanted to have you on because uh you are an insect specialist yeah photographer yeah uh, and insect and like hummingbirds and things like that stop yeah. motion it, yeah. it's like the hardest thing i can imagine yeah. to take a tiny object that you is hard to predict where it's going to be and then do close-up photography and take something that flaps its wings 60 times a second and uh -huh. freeze it in time and space. Yeah. And have everything in focus so you can see the hairs on the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, your, your work is just amazing. And I can't imagine the skill and the patience it takes to do what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, I got into this. People a, a lot of times ask me how I got into doing pollinator photography and you know I, I really only got into photography about eight years ago I've been an artist in one aspect or another my whole life as a kid I was a sketch artist I can draw photorealistic uh, but then in my teens I got really into music started playing the guitar and that kind of took over as my artistic passion and uh, anyone out there who uh, has an artistic interest will understand that you've got to be passionate about what you're doing in order to create. It, it's not something that you, most people who are artistic can't just sit down and, and start drawing or making music from a, uh, a place of, of that it's a job. It has to be you, you hear something or you feel something or you see something that inspires that. And uh, so, you know, at in college, I decided to get a, a degree to where I could have a responsible job, but always had the, the uh, desire to pursue something artistic, particularly the music at that time. But then the job and life, you know, you get married and things start, um, hap you get busy and, and before you know it, you're not doing any of your art. Well, about 15 years ago, my wife and I started uh, to travel a little bit and she was always loving the pictures I was taking on my phone. And so she surprised me with uh, my first real camera about eight years ago as a Christmas present, and I was instantly hooked on, on photography. Um, after about a year, she said, hey, you know, I got you that camera. She's an avid gardener. And she's like, I got you that camera. When are you gonna start taking pictures of my flowers and my butterflies? And I was like, <laughs> I tell you what, next Christmas, give me a good macro lens and I'll, I'll do your, your flowers and your butterflies. Because I was really more into portraits. Uh, yeah. I really like environmental portraiture. And I think that that has carried over into what I do now where I like to capture things in their natural environment, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, so she went ahead and got me that macro lens and I figured I'd take a few pictures for her. Had no idea uh, what was about to happen. I put that lens on there and within 30 minutes, you know, this is Christmas, mind you now, and even in Houston, where I'm from, it, it's too cold uh, to really be out. There's no insects, there's nothing uh, to really explore outside. But I found myself just going all over the house, just exploring the house in a different way, um, looking at things up close, and just playing with the camera in a way that I'd never done before. Uh, prior to that, I was always in my head uh, before taking the picture. I was thinking about what settings would be right and what light I should use. And with that macro lens, I was just walking around, just experimenting. I'm like, oh, I wonder what will happen if I do this. Oh, that's cool. You know, let me adjust this setting, you know, the, the aperture. Or let me adjust the shutter speed. And just played with it and didn't really care uh, before I snapped what I was going to get. I wanted to see what I was going to get. Yeah. And and like I said, the that light bulb went off about 30 minutes after that. I was like, you're actually being an artist now instead of being a technician. And, uh, and so I just fell in love with macro photography and then in the spring when the, uh, the insects start to come out and the pollinators in particular, um, I started taking pictures and just found myself really fascinated, particularly like so with bees and with you know how they, how they move, getting to see them up close, realizing things. I had no idea they had hair on their eyes yeah. until I started doing macro photography and so I just became fascinated. 
And uh, as I started sharing some of those pictures on my social media, people were reacting in a way they had never reacted to my previous work. So that started telling me, you know, I think, you know, maybe I found my niche. And then within a few weeks, uh, the editor of uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife magazine contacted me and they wanted to use a few of my photos in the story they were doing about Texas native pollinators. And I was like, okay, it's, so it's not just me and some of my followers that think this is good. You know, this is actually a, uh, the editor of a magazine thinks my work is good. So I, uh, that, that kind of sealed it for me, you know, that this, this was my calling. It wasn't just... Uh, uh, something that, that was fun. It was something that I was passionate and uh, really good at. Had a, a, an eye for it and a skill for it. And so, you know, since then, um, I do the artistic prints, uh, started doing some different, uh, primarily focused in that first year on, on trying to get into more magazines. But, but when I did my first show, I really found that I loved being uh, more of an artist than a content creator, uh, yeah. you know. And I still like, you know, uh, if a magazine contacts me, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, sell them some of my photos, but I don't necessarily want to have somebody assign me a project. I want to uh, just be out exploring and creating and, uh, and like I said, just have really enjoyed uh, just kind of making that my whole, the whole thing that I do now. There's a balance between art and job, and you like the art part of it better than the job part of it. Ab absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's definitely... Uh, things you know with my degree and with my background that I could do if I wanted to just do a job for money I could do, make a lot more money doing something <laughs> else that that's going to be the job so I'd, I'd rather uh, because this is something that I get to do um, and just uh, express myself artistically I want to keep it that way and yes. and and I've tried both and like I said I've just really found that, that that's that's where my heart's at and, and I need to need to stay true to that to keep my art good so let's talk about how you get these pictures. Mm -hmm. You were telling me some of it yesterday, the, the difference in nectar producing flowers and pollen producing flowers when bees yeah. when bees forage for nectar, they move between flowers really quickly. Yeah. And they don't visit the same flower that much. Right. Because they get the nectar out of it and then it takes a while for the flower to produce more. Yeah. But pollen foraging the yeah. bees come back to the same flowers so yeah. you you were specifically targeting pollen foragers yeah and i guess it also gives you the color of the pollen on the bee which yeah. is yeah. neat yeah so t talk about some of the mechanics of how you actually get these images okay yeah so um one of the things that um when i started doing the pollinator photography you know, I thought it would be really cool to get some shots of the bees in flight, and just, it was really, really difficult. And, you know, I, I tried, uh, you know, in, in adjusting different settings on the camera, tried to be faster, and, and I had this aha moment, as you were uh, just kind of describing, where I realized that when, uh, when they were foraging for pollen, they'd go back to the same flower multiple times, um, they'll hover right next to that flower uh, for a few seconds. Now when they're hovering, they're still kind of dancing around like that. So it's not like it's, it's easy, it's just easier. That when they're foraging from nectar, yeah, they'll just maybe three or four seconds at the most on a flower. Even uh, there's some flowers that have multiple blooms all over them and they'll, they'll go on to it, get a quick sip, move on to the next one, next one, next one, and, and then on to the next flower. But if it's just got a single bloom, They'll go in three or four seconds, get get a drink, go on to the next flower. They don't stay very long. Uh, when they're foraging for pollen, uh, particularly on really pollen-heavy flowers, po uh, poppies are one of my favorites for that because they've got tons of pollen. You'll actually see the bees just tumbling around down in there in the in the pollen. And if it's a really good flower, you'll see five, six, seven. I've seen nine bees in one flower at oh, one wow. time. Yeah, and uh, and so then what they do. They get covered with pollen all over their face, all over their body, and they have to put it in those pollen sacks. And so they'll pop off the flower, hover next to it, cleaning all that off. And it's amazing to watch that, you know, I've got video as well of that now. And uh, to see how they do that, they actually spit out a little drop of nectar uh, that they pass back to the back legs to help that pollen stick back there. Oh, just uh, that's super cool. Can I get a clip of that? I will send you a clip of that. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to see that. The good news is I have multiple clips of that. And so, yeah, I'll send you uh, a couple of little videos of that so you can see that action. Um, you know, it's, it's neat to see the, the vortex, uh, you know, from the, oh, from the, the wings. The like wings. It, 
dust yeah. and the pollen dust and yeah stuff. so the wow. wings don't flap up and down they're a j pattern that go, hooks forward and back yeah. like that and it creates a vortex underneath and uh, and you can see it you know if, it, if it's a flower that's got lots of uh, lots of little anthers um, they'll start swishing around you know like when a helicopter's landing <laughs> on on grass and you see see in video very it similar is. thing and, you, and you'd never see that with the naked eye yeah, but you're, you're seeing things that you know you just don't see it our scale yeah yeah exactly so it's like another world yeah yeah so I and, and I tell people you know I, I don't have a scientific background but I'm an accidental entomologist you know I, <laughs> but that's really what what science is you know it's just getting out there exploring documenting making notes and and the way that I make notes is with the camera and uh, and like I said for me it's it's extremely important to capture things in an artistic way to where it makes me say wow or this is incredible uh, this looks beautiful because if it does that for me, hopefully it's going to do that for other people. And particularly with uh, referencing back that story that I told you, you know, where I got published the first time about Texas native pollinators, you know, that that really made me realize how in decline so many of our native pollinators and even, you know, honeybees are. are. And so it's really important that we uh, protect their environment and uh, protect those creatures. And one of the, the best things that I can do, I'm not, I try not to be real preachy, mm -hmm. uh, but the way that I look at it is that if people will love my art, hopefully they'll also love that creature a little bit more. They'll look at it a little differently yeah. instead of thinking of it as a scary, you know, bee that's going to sting them. Oh, you know, it's so pretty, it's fuzzy, and it's cute. And so now they start thinking about that creature in a different way. If they got the art up on their walls, they're going to, if they go out into their backyard, instead of getting some bug spray, you know, they're going to think about maybe getting some native wildflowers to help, you know, uh, those uh, pollinators do better in, you know, in their neighborhood. How, how many shots do you have to take to get a good one? Um, so, uh, the, <laughs> early on, I used to have to take a lot. Uh, completely honest with you now, I, I have a pretty high uh, hit ratio now. Um, probably 75, 80% of my shots are in focus. But what's happened, as you get better, you know, I'm, I'm very much of the philosophy, my next shot is my best shot. Yeah. And so I'm always looking to improve. And, and when you're dealing with uh, moving insects, there, you obviously can't get them to pose for you. Yeah. And so you have to uh, capture them. For me, I want an interesting composition. And that, with an insect, that's going to mean the way that they're angled, the way that their wings are positioned, all of those things. So I'll, I'll get, you know, in one morning of shooting for a few hours, I'll get maybe two or three hundred uh, shots, all perfectly in focus, all uh, flight shots. But some of them, the wings are covering the eyes a little yeah. or they're a little or in there. The worst is when they're halfway through that J because then they're just sticking out from the sides. And, and, and unless I catch the them from the front, they, it looks cool. But from the side, yeah, you don't see a wing at all. And so, yeah, there's little things like that that I look for now that, that um, it, it can't just be a, a good shot. It has to be, you know, just like an exceptional shot, best of the best type of thing. And that's, that's what I, I hold on to and turn into an artistic print. So how can someone get in contact to you, with you, find your work and all that? Uh, my website is uh, pollinatorportraits.com. Uh, no That's a great name. Yeah, no underscores. Or um, before I had set that up, I had set up originally as jmadimages.com. Uh, again, no underscores. It's just all lowercase like that. And so either one of those will take you to the same site. Poll Pollinator Portraits. Pollinatorportraits.com. Yeah. Uh, the same thing on Facebook. I'm uh, Pollinator Portraits by J Madrigal. Uh, you can find me on Facebook like that or on Instagram. Again, because I had already set it up previous to uh, doing the pollinator portrait things, it's JMAD Images or at JMAD Images like that. Yep. Awesome. So, Anything yeah. else you want to cover? Um, I do teach workshops as well. I've okay. taught workshops. Uh, You're teaching for, for like close up insect? Yeah. Close up moving image exactly. photography. Yeah, I teach uh, in person workshops. Obviously, I'm in Texas, so. Uh, that would, uh, if people are interested and they're in the uh, Texas area, yeah. you know, uh, look me up for that. Um, but I've also got some webinars online. I've taught for B&H Photo and a couple of other uh, brands that have asked me to do webinars, primarily during the uh, 
during the pandemic, I was doing the uh, the, li the live stream type of yeah, stuff, you, the video stuff. You gave me some information yesterday on how you were getting some of these photos. I'm not going to get into that because I don't want you to give away your secret sauce, it, but it, 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 is, it is incredibly in-depth yeah. and specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if everything doesn't come together with what you're doing, it's just black. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have a picture. <laughs> Absolutely. You've got to do all these things that are at the extreme just yeah. to get this to work it's you, you just figured it out yeah yeah so, and it's, it's really cool yeah that, that's what it's about um, I, I don't mind giving out my secrets the thing that I've told people because um, I've had people uh, message me online and ask me for tips and they're like thanks you know I appreciate that, that you don't mind holding that back and uh, and I tell them you know it's still gonna take a lot of work you're gonna have to spend <laughs> a lot of time out there and if you're willing to put in that work I'm more than willing to give you the information because it's it's not going to make it easy. It's just going to kind of give you a starting point. Yeah. And uh, you're still going to have to work and learn to build those reflexes because you've, you've kind of got to see when those moment, right moments are happening and you've got to position yourself. You're going to have to spend a lot of time crawling and squatting, which at 53 years old is a whole lot harder than it was six years ago when I started doing it. Yeah. So, uh, it, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a challenging. But like I said, if, if somebody's willing to do the work that it takes, I I want to see your pictures. I can't, I can't wait to be amazed, you know, by uh, seeing other other people's work as well. Awesome, Jose. I appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate thank it. you. All right. I think that we're good.